Hello everyone, it's Helen at Journaling Planet and today we are going to look at doing some mark making on junk mail and this is an alternative to buying scrapbook paper or collage paper. I keep a little um, folder and fill it with things that I think I could dip in paint and make some interesting patterns with and um, if you use acrylic paint like this um, or something like this then it's thick enough that often it covers most of what's going on underneath. Most people who know this channel well know that I do a lot of things with ink stamps but to be honest with you not everyone can afford that for one thing and you know if you've got things lying around anyway then why would you not have a go at using them to dip in your paint and I'll tell you what all these things are although I have to say I'm not I'm not totally sure what this is it's left over from when my husband made the bunk beds in the spare room I think and um, not being a DIY person I don't really have any idea what that is I think a lot of people are aware of things like um, dipping you know things like bubble wrap into paint Oh, you see, not even started yet and I've already got paint on my hands. I knew this was going to be messy. Okay, and I have a trusty old piece of um, tea towel that has seen better days. I'm going to start with a dark colour for the background. I'm going to start with black. And I think when you've got something as busy as this in your junk mail, I mean, some of you may cut things out of this rather than... Uh, then go over it and make craft paper out of it. But today's tutorial is about making craft paper. So I'm going to turn it around this way so that I make as little mess as possible. And I think sometimes with things like this, the best thing you can do to start with is to get rid of as much white as you can. Okay, so obviously that is not finished yet, but you can hopefully already see that it looks more interesting than it did before and if I was using it for collage I mean I could probably already use it as it is. I am going to add some more layers um, in a little bit and once it's dry but you get the sense I'm immediately starting to make something a little bit more interesting than the junk mail I had before. When I've got a piece of brown paper like this one I don't need to worry about um, you know, making, getting rid of loads of white. So I can use some more intricate and sort of more interesting mark making tools. So for example, um, this is the end of uh, a washi tape. This is the inside of it. I'm just gonna dip it in what's left of my black ink and just start. Lovely. So that also needs to be set aside to dry. Those metallic paints will take a little bit longer to dry. And lastly, I just, I want to finish off um, the paint that I've, you know, meted out, uh, what's left of it. So I'm just going to go around my palette with the sponge and just kind of dab along. going over there to dry it does get very um, delicate once you put your paint on so just be aware of that one last thing that I wanted to sort of show and that was um, let's just have a go with this first because I've still got a tiny bit of paint left um, so we'll have a go with this and and see what kind of marks it makes Gonna leave these to dry and let them be a chaotic mess and then I'll come back to them and see how they look. Okay, I really like how these are turning out, for example. Um, and I'll show you the other one, it's just not quite dry yet. Um, it probably looks a bit of a mess on video, but when you see it in person, you can see all the kind of pearlescent elements of the paint, and I'm not actually going to use it as a whole piece it's going to be broken up so that will also help it but this is not quite dry yet so I'm going to work with the pieces that are dry 
um, which is the, the brown paper, this little piece of um, very much scrap junk mail, and also another piece of scrap junk mail. Oh, this is still actually a tiny bit wet, but I might get away with using it. I thought I would just use my glue book to show you how I might use these pieces of paper because um, they look quite a lot when you see them in their totality. But when you break them up into little scraps, as I will be doing, uh, they can work really wonderfully as part of a large collage. Now, I have to, I tear the pages out of this glue book, which is why it's empty. Um, but anybody who has ever watched a kind of that's upside down. Anyone's ever watched a sort of Joey Defee um, collage video? If you haven't, I really recommend you going over there and taking a look at that. You'll recognise this style of collage. And I did this with kind of autumnal colours, but I'm now going to do a sort of gothic um, collage. So the only other thing I'm going to be using besides the collage papers is I may use a bit of this tea dyed paper. I haven't done any tea dyeing in a while because it is an absolute process. And I'll also be using my scraps box because of course I will, because I need to use up my scraps. Okay, it's now the next day and I do think it is worth coming back to things like this the next day to just think what else you might add. I'd like a bit of text washi um, somewhere on this. So I, this is the one that I have at the moment that has some text on it. I'm just going to get to a piece where I think it would make um, look particularly good on this. I think that's here. pleased with that I'm going to set that aside to dry and we're going to do some different ephemera with the hopefully with the other um, pieces of paper I made yesterday that are now hopefully dry okay these are the papers from yesterday that were still drying and the texture on them that you probably can't see it on the video is really awesome um, even this one that's kind of all over the place um, I know there's going to be great texture on that when I cut it up into little pieces I'm going to work with this one I think we'll, we'll go with making a tag I have this in my scrap box uh, left over from another failed page where I tried to stick um, some book page down it just for whatever reason it just did not work the page did not work so I tore it up and I, you know, use it as basically masterboard, which is something that you can do. Um, and I'm going to use this as a backing. I'm going to keep the book page on the back side of the tag. And I'm going to maybe look at putting a little bit more brown paper on the back so people have room to write something. But um, first thing I'm going to do is um, trim this piece of paper so it's a little bit more straight. So hopefully you can see as soon as you start trimming it down, it starts to look more and more like ephemera, like a piece of ephemera rather than a piece of junk mail that you threw some paint over. And you can still see the word Salvation Army through this. I quite like that, but I think that the embellishment I put on there will likely cover most of it over. So you'll just see a little bit of text left over. Okay, I've just stamped with my rose stamp onto a piece of scrap paper from a stamping magazine, so I quite like that symmetry. And now I'm just going to fussy cut around it. 
This, by the way, is how I created the owl and the skull on this piece of collage. Most of my ephemera I make by just having ink stamps and using them as many times as I want. So, <laughs> so this is what happens I get so excited about these tags um, this happens every time because I'm just slightly obsessed with tags so that's that get my nice scissors out of the ink and paint and they're going to need a wash let me just have a look at these um, this collage now Okay, so what I have done is I have sewn around, uh, in some places very poorly, sewn around the edge of this tag. I had white thread in my machine to begin with. And then around here, I ran out of white thread. So I re-threaded with black and went around the rest of it. Um, do I mind? No, because it's supposed to look grungy, so it's all fine and this angle as well totally wrong when i turned it on the machine i don't mind it's supposed to look that way okay it's supposed to look a bit funny and handmade on the back i just um glued down a spare bit of envelope and i um distressed around it so there's a bit of writing space there and that is that tag done and i hope you can see how this background really adds a little something unique to this tag then which one did I okay this one I just went around the edge uh, with a stitch I hadn't used before and I really liked it it did have some issues with some parts of the collage being too thick um, which is why I had to help it and why it's quite irregular in places I quite like the irregular nature of it however if you want to avoid that you would just do you would stitch around it before you glued on the backing paper and i'm pretty sure that it wouldn't have the same issues because it would be too thin also if you don't have a sewing machine it is perfectly possible to just draw some black lines around it and you get an ex a very very similar aesthetic i did and this is the again the beauty of these things i did just think as i looked at this that i would like an extra piece of washi across here between the black and the red and so i'm just going to tear a piece that is what i think is thin enough to have the effect that i want um i just wanted to close that gap between the two a little bit And this is just the beauty of this kind of project. You can keep adding until you're satisfied. It doesn't matter how long that takes you. I'm going to just put a bit more here because I've got it spare. I'm just put a bit more here. It's very subtle. It, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't do a great deal, but it just um, takes the edge off things um, if you if you want it to do that. So I'm just going to put that there. I'm going to put it just a bit higher up so it's not on the stitching. That's it. So I'm happy with this now, really. I, I know that the washi tape might not stick so great to the fabric, so I'll maybe think of a fix for that later, just put a bit of glue on it. 
But all in all, I am really happy with how this has turned out as a journaling card. If I bring this quite up close, hopefully you can see the texture of this um, inking here, this, this kind of painting. You can see the, the purple blending there into the blue, I hope. And down here where I did the circles on the brown paper, I hope you can see that as well. Um, obviously, this is a mixed media project, so it's not just using the paper that I created, this. But that's really the beauty of it, is that you can uh, tear it up and create different textures. And then the last thing that I did, slightly differently, hopefully you can see there is some stitching through the journal card at different points. Decided to mix it up. I really like how it looks. I also went around the border with the with the other stitch, the same as the other one. But I there's something you need to be aware of, and that is that I had already glued the backing on. If this bothers you, you should do it before you stick the backing on. I like this because I actually think it'd be cool if people use them as lines to write on so that the writing was going in all kinds of different directions. So I just think it adds the grungy look. So for example, with this diagonal one, you could write in this direction and then you could turn it around and write in the other direction. You'd have text that was kind of mirrored. So I'm pretty excited about using this journaling card. So I really hope you found this video interesting and entertaining. Um, I've had so much fun making it as ever. The last thing I'll point your attention to is when you do this kind of project, your scraps become much more interesting. This is junk mail, junk paper. And now it's an interesting piece of scrap that I'll use in a project and really get some interesting texture on whatever project I do. So thank you so much for watching. I'll look forward to seeing you next time with some more ideas.